Welcome back to another display tutorial. Today we're in a Case IH flagship combine and we're going to be going over how to set up a yield monitor for the precision harvesting system. So we're at the run screen now. We're going to navigate back to our toolbox and this is the majority of the setups going to be done in here. There is some other settings that we'll have to do as well. Uh, so the first thing that you need to make sure of is in the display setup tab here that the advanced interface level is selected. If it's set to basic, it basically ignores the USB and there's no data recording functionality. The current vehicle will also have to be selected, so this will be different if you're on a mid-range combine. They actually have a little bit different vehicle software for that. So make sure that you have that selected. Next thing is the operator. So we can use an operator uh, to uh, maybe track our employees or if you wanted to use it on the desktop software for tracking purposes you can certainly do that as well. Uh, current layout we have a video uh, dedicated to the layout on the run screens but if you want to uh, maybe set up different configurations on different run screens you can certainly do that. Uh, video setup this is just for uh, the three video inputs that you would have inside the display so if you wanted uh, maybe a camera on the reverse side of the combine or on the loading auger or something like that, you can certainly set that up. Uh, in the combine tab, so we've got our speed sensor type. Uh, we need to make sure that that's set to something. Uh, we do have to have a wheel speed input for auto guidance and uh, also for uh, mapping, we have to have a speed source of 0.5 miles per hour and higher. Uh, moving on down to head one, this will be the majority of our head setup. Uh, for the maximum working height, uh, this would be uh, the point at which all of the data recording stops uh, for the precision harvesting system. So we would actually use the multi-function handle in this case and raise or lower the head uh, to the point where we want data recording to stop. And keep in mind that this would be for each crop type. And then we would hit set or cal, uh, could be different depending on what vehicle that you're on, and then hit enter. And then all this number here, this uh, actually calibration value would change. Uh, header type, so it's set to corn, and then of course row is defaulted already. If we have a platform header, uh, we can change that as well. Uh, the row spacing, uh, you'll also see on platform headers. Uh, you'll actually have a target working width, which will be the swath width of the combine. This is what you're actually painting on the map. And then the actual header width is going to be the physical width of the header. So we would use that for boundaries and obstacles and, and those sort of purposes. Um, auto cut width, we need to make sure that that's set to on. Uh, this basically acts as a section control for the combine. So if you get into a previously harvested area, it will cut down uh, your width of the head automatically. And this obviously requires GPS because it needs to know where it's at. Uh, but that's the easiest way. You can also do this manually, but this is the easiest way uh, to do this. Uh, sometimes you'll see instead of head one and head two, you may have header there as well. Uh, so it really just depends on what uh, vehicle that you're on. Uh, moving on down, we need to make sure the GPS is set up. Autonomous is fine. Uh, you could use WAS or RTK or Omnistar, whatever uh, correction sources you may want to run on, but autonomous will work for yield mapping. Uh, season setup date on the PF tab. We need to make sure that that's set up correctly because at this date right here, all of the data inside the display as far as mapping is concerned, all that archives, and you would have to have a desktop software package in order to retrieve that. Toolbox yield. So inside the display, if you go into here, this is your yield and moisture setup. So this is just uh, telling the display or telling the system that you have a yield sensor, you have a moisture sensor, and then you have a can base system as well. So you have a flow sensor on the top of the clean grain elevator that is can based. Your yield flow delay, typically this is 12 to 15 seconds. And this is a measure of really just a machine delay. So it's at the point uh, at which you cut the crop 
to the point at which the crop hits the flow sensor, what is that delay? And we need to use that because we need to know exactly where to map that product when it hits the flow sensor. Uh, nav S and Nav P, if you have auto guidance, you would set it up through that screen. Uh, going back, um, the only other thing that I'll talk about is uh, performance. So we need to make sure that we have a grower, farm, field, and task selected and a crop type. Uh, each task will have one crop type. And then if we go into calibrations, we will cover a distance, a moisture, and a yield calibration in another video. But the main thing here is the crop calibration. So you have a crop type. This is what we're actually harvesting, so we need to make sure that that's set up correctly. Uh, the manual moisture is the value that we would use if the moisture sensor fails. Your crop trade moisture and crop trade weight, those are generally accepted uh, units. Uh, from the industry. So if that's different you can verify with your elevator and certainly put a different number in there But these are pretty standard um, across the board uh, The C values that you can import uh, This is used to import the calibration values from a similar crop type This is not recommended for high accuracy Mainly because if you have two flagship combines in the field running together uh, the calibrations could be different so we need to make sure that we uh, try to avoid that if possible. Um, your C1 value is a calibration value and can be changed if the system uh, vibration is creating false yield readings on the map. Um, your C values, all of these are shown as pounds per second multiplied by 100, so these would be calculated during a yield calibration. The M percentage, uh, this is a moisture sensor offset and this is calculated uh, during your moisture calibration. Typically this is negative 5 uh, to 8 percent. Your M1 value is the moisture sensor constant and this is a fixed value and actually uh, based upon the crop type. And then lastly the S1 value is the moisture sensor sensitivity and this is a fixed value also based upon the crop type. So you may have different values here depending on what crop you have set up. Like I said, we will go through a moisture and a yield and a distance calibration a little bit later on. Uh, but as far as setup goes, uh, this is the basic setup for the flagship combine regarding the yield monitor. Thank you.